and a double-decker electric bus conversion. Uh, we decided rather than um, duplicate some of the things we talked about earlier on, we're just going to and yeah, this, this, this is uh, the intention behind it was to do the first double-deck electric bus conversion we think in the world, and hopefully not the last. And it begins really about four and a half years ago. Uh, um, despite York being a beautiful, magical city, it does have air quality problems like all the cities in the UK. And there was some work done at the time which identified that uh, a significant proportion between 10% and 30% of the nitrogen dioxide levels in the city actually come from the bus sector. And for us, this is a big problem because York, if you know York at all, is a very pro-bus city. We have a quality bus partnership, we have a better bus area, we have really good bus patronage, which is busting the national average. We're actually increasing bus patronage year on year. And yet, buses are also simultaneously causing pollution. So uh, one of the things we did is look in for, uh, to discover if technology can find solutions it's back in 2012, we started to look at all the routes in York, we looked at every single route and said, where could you, where would you use um, an, an electric bus and where would it be possible? And as it, as it turned out, much to our surprise that if you think of buses in terms of movements rather than numbers of vehicles, um, what, what that means is um, about 49% about of the buses in the city contribute about 83% of bus movements. So most buses come in you know, three, four times a day. Some buses will do 15, 20 times a day. So how far do these buses go? As it turns out, you can imagine park and ride buses, things like that, they don't go very far, which means that they might well just be possible to run them using electric technology. Um, so 80% of bus movements, but not 80% of buses. Uh, it's about 49% of uh, buses, which is about 100 buses. And so we started a project by en engaging local bus operators. Mark Mundy was, uh, from first was, was there right at the outset. Uh, Transdev were also involved in other, other major operators. We engaged with through a local quality bus partnership as well. And we, we started to sell the benefits because we identified really early on, here was a technology which was potentially a win, win, win for everyone. It was a win for the bus operators because they can get some very low cost fuel, good cost saving. It was a win for the passengers because they got a nicer, quieter, smoother, people have heard this already, bus and a win for the city and they would get better air quality and that, you know, we, we potentially a quick win for air quality as well. And this gave birth to the idea really of the, the York Clean Air Zone. Um, this is slightly different to what you may have heard in the, you know, the national press. Uh, the York Clean Air Zone uh, goes back about three years and we conceived in this as being a, a voluntary clean air zone, which was uh, of, of benefit, mutual benefit to everyone. Um, since then, DEFRA have come up with the mandatory clean air zones around five cities which is a slightly different thing. So just to differentiate between the two. Uh, I won't dwell too much on these, but uh, out of the, uh, the initial discussions of uh, the project, there, there was um, the, the local bus operator first made a bid for six electric buses to run on a park and ride service. And before they'd actually taken delivery of them, they then ordered another six. So we ended up with two full electric park and rides, which is one of the outputs from the project. And it was starting to look good. It was potentially we could get to this 80% of bus movements running clean through the city. And we're not entirely wed to electric. We're also interested in biomethane and plug-in hybrid and other technologies as well, provided we can get that air quality benefit. But there was a problem. That's these things. So uh, sightseeing buses, uh, quite old buses. Uh, the newer ones we had were about 15 years old, some of them were 30 years old. Sightseeing buses quite often become sightseeing buses when they drive into a bridge and lose their top and it's just easier to make them that way. So, you know, if you had to design something to create pollution in an urban environment, it would probably be big and red and have lots of colourful writing on the side. So it was, it was a, a, um, a challenge for us in the sense that uh, the technology was all new technology. So all the electric buses were brand new buses and you wouldn't expect a sightseeing bus to be a brand new bus. It didn't quite add up or fit. So we said, okay, what, what can we do? What are the options out there? How, how are we gonna solve this, uh, this problem? And the, the solution came from a collaboration of various different parties. There was uh, Magtech, who are a Yorkshire based supplier of equipment. They actually were the, the OEM supplier into Opter at the time. And we, we knew Magtech's uh, equipment and history. Um, Transdev, who were the franchiser to this, uh, the sightseeing service 
Transdev owned the buses. Department for Transport uh, had a clean bus technology grant at the time, back in 2013, and a lot of that went to retrofitting in terms of exhausts, but we said, you know, would you be willing to fund, as a one-off, you know, trial, this electric bus project? Um, and they said no. <laughs> and and then uh, um, I went back down to London and said, please, and we, we talked about the, the not just the fact that there was air quality benefits, but the fact that actually this was potentially the, a new industry, a new British industry that could be created as well. And they said yes. And they gave us £76,000 to do the conversion. We then began a very long and protracted period of discussion, probably the most difficult bit of the project, going back and forth, trying to work out whether there was any more costs, any more funding that could be found. No. So uh, eventually we all agreed that we would do the project for the funding we had. And yeah, it's a bit like open heart surgery on a bus. It's, it's, it is challenging. And I, m I remember sitting around a table with 14 engineers from different sizes trying to think, well, how are we going to do this? The bus already has an electrical system. It has its own CAN system. And whatever you put into it has to talk to what's there. That's what we took out. 2.2 tons of diesel engine and drivetrain, actually heavier than what went in. So that was one of the first surprises we had, that actually the bus was getting lighter. And that doesn't count the 200 kilograms of dirt that they took out when they cleaned it out as well, that's true. Uh, they put in uh, controllers, motors, that's the battery pack inside the bus, put it inside the bus just to demonstrate it. That's it being demonstrated down in New York and did a, a, a trial and it, yeah, lo and behold, it moved and it worked and it breathed and uh, yeah, it, was, it did everything it was supposed to do. Um, but we had to go through a certification process. Uh, that wasn't straightforward. That um, probably took about six or seven months just to work out who did what. It's probably not that far once you know when, what you're doing. And then the battery packs got moved into the back of the bus and it started service. And so we, we launched it uh, around two years ago and it's been in operation most, most of the time, it it's, uh, has had a few uh, problems with motors, which were fixed under warranty, and it gets through the day. It's a, it's a daily uh, duty of about 60 miles. It has been tested over 80. It was driven to a workshop at a uh, fairly high speed on a hilly route over 80. So the battery capacity was deliberately sized to be greater than what it would need for the inevitable degradation that would happen as the, the vehicle aged. It will probably run for another 15 years. So. On the maiden journey, we did have our first complaint. The people complained the volume was too loud from the tour guide. So <laughs> we had to turn it down. Nice problem to have. There was a nice moment when the bus pulled up right next to another sightseeing bus and you could hear the diesel engine running on it. And you think, why would you do that? It doesn't, you know, it just it seems very obvious. So it's, it's been a successful project. Um, <coughs> it was the, uh, the first bus to get on the road. Since then, there's been orders. Uh, for other buses through to MagTech. <coughs> In fact, we've just placed an order for another five of them as well. So we're, we're, the whole sightseeing bus um, fleet will, will be electric by uh, around April of next year. And um, the, the operator, Transdev, are, are very pleased with the performance of it. And we're interested in terms of what ex ex improvement this will have on the passenger experience. And if we can get all the fleet to go electric, can we brand it this way? And can, how can this increase passenger usage of it as well? So it's not the only electric bus operation in the city, uh, but uh, it's cut a very long story short. The, uh, we also have the park and rides, which are now over 11, uh, 1 million kilometers. And uh, we are on our way to becoming a, a low emission bus city. And uh, I'll end it there. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>